Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Pastor Steve here. Thank you so much for joining me today in our Bible reading plan. We are in the book of Psalms, chapter 85, Psalm 85. And as always, I hope you've already read this chapter and written in your journal what God has shown you, taught you, and how you are going to respond to it, how you're going to put it into action in your life. I also want to remind you, that this Sunday is Time Change Sunday, so remember you set your clocks back an hour, fall back, get an extra hour sleep, so be here in a great mood, be here early, get a seat down front for worship, be there in your life group early, invite somebody to come with you, pray that God gives you an opportunity this day to invite someone to worship with you here at church this coming Sunday. All right, Psalm 85 is what we call a post-exilic psalm. In other words, it was written after the, uh, the Jewish people uh, had returned from exile in Babylon. And they were rebuilding Jerusalem and the temple, but it was early in that rebuild. They still had a long way to go. So that's the context for this psalm. The verse that spoke to my heart and the verse that I really love is verse 10. So let's look at verse 10 for just a moment. He says, loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Now, the first phrase, loving kindness and truth have met together. Uh, The NIV and the King James and some other Bibles may trance loving kindness there as love or mercy. And I think some of them translate the word truth there as as, uh, faithfulness. Well, loving kindness is, is, is the word chesed. Um, God's faithfulness, God's kindness, God's goodness, God's love is often used for his covenant love for the nation, for the people of, of Israel. So God's goodness and kindness and faithfulness, the word translated truth, um, it, has, it has a sense of being firm of being reliable, of being dependable and, and uh, consistent. And, and the idea is that, and, and, and especially as it relates to speech or teaching, so that what God says, what God teaches, God's words are faithful, reliable, firm, unchanging, true. And so the picture is of God's goodness and God's reliable truth. And so here's this image of goodness Kindness, love, and truth, reliability, steadfastness to the, to the truth of God, they, they, uh, they meet. They, they go hand in hand. They, they meet together. And the reality is that for, for you and me in our lives on, on a practical level is that kindness and truth are not enemies. Kindness and truth are not enemies in God, and kindness and truth do not have to be enemies in us. You can be kind and live according to truth. Now, our culture doesn't think that. Our culture thinks that if if you speak the truth, if you you think the truth, if you believe the truth in certain situations, especially today in some of the sexual ethics issues, the transgender issues, homosexuality, other things like that, that that if you speak what we know to be truth, then you are being unkind. The culture thinks the only way you can be kind is you have to affirm, you have to agree, you have to go along with. But that's not the case. That's not, that's not right. Truth and kindness can coexist. Now, let's be honest. There are too many Christians, too many people who go to church, too many people who think of themselves as followers of Jesus who do not hold kindness and truth together. Some will be very kind while compromising the truth. Others will cling to the truth with boldness and be jerks about it, be unkind. God holds kindness and love and truth together. So can we, as a disciple of Jesus. I mean, think about his very life. The woman caught in adultery, they want her to be stoned, and Jesus says, the one who's without sin, throw the first stone, and they all drop their rocks and walk away. And then, in his conversation with her, he says, neither do I condemn you. The kindness and 
love and goodness, but go and sin no more. The truth. You can hold kindness and truth together. God does, and we can. And our witness as followers of Jesus would be so much more effective and powerful if we would be committed to holding kindness and truth together. Now, the second phrase in verse 10, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. I love that image. I thought about a man and woman standing before God, their family, and a pastor, and after he pronounces them husband and wife, they kiss, the union of the two. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. And here, God in his word says that righteousness and peace have kissed. Righteousness is right living. But righteousness at its core is right living not only in how you treat God, but in how you treat other people. And so it's often in the Old Testament, especially with the prophets, connected with justice and doing what is fair and what is right. So righteousness at its heart is how you treat God and how you treat others, treating God right and treating others right. And what he says here is that righteousness, okay, treating God and treating others right, righteousness and peace is the Hebrew word shalom for completeness, for health, for wholeness, for peace. They have kissed each other. In other words, when you treat God right and you treat other people right, and by the way, part of treating other people right is the first part of verse 10, living the truth and speaking the truth while being kind and loving and compassionate. When you do that, then the result of of, of doing God right and doing others right is peace, stability, wholeness, health. Stability, health in your life. Stability, health in the community, in the church, in the country, if you will. You see, injustice, not treating others right, unkindness, toward others, um, whether you hold the truth or not, all of that creates instability. Sin creates chaos. So you and I are to be holy while being kind, while doing what is right toward others, while obeying the word of God. And when we do that, the result's going to be peace and stability. Leave out any of this. Leave out the kindness and the goodness and the love. Leave out the truth. Leave out treating God right. Leave out treating others right. Omit any of those. And your life, your walk with God, is not going to be as stable. It's not going to be filled with the shalom of Almighty God. So, treat God right, treat others right, Stand for and live for the truth, but be kind and gentle in the process. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow as we wrap up this week and look at Psalm 86. God bless you, everybody.